we're talking it up to him like yeah this is this helps us see god like this is our med this is like a tool we use for meditation in america and like this helps us connect to spirituality and stuff so we really built it up we okay. were calling it samadhi medicine but we were explaining this to our friend sonu baba okay. and then the other guy is the guy who took it we were calling him tiger baba because he has a turban that's got tiger stripes on it so we were Pretty calling cool. him tiger baba sonu baba hands tiger baba one of the lsd tabs we explained it to sonu baba tiger baba walks up in the middle of the conversation sonu baba hands him the lsd without explaining it anything to him tiger baba just eats it right away he doesn't even let boom. us he doesn't even it boom and then he goes om namah shiva om namah shiva and walks away so we're just like what the fuck like like no wait <laughs> and then we wait, never wait, saw him again <laughs> yo what's up welcome your mate tom podcast episode 18 i think don't quite be on that uh first things first welcome felix the newest member of our family we adopted him the other day he's adorable aren't you mate <laughs> yeah anyways just before we get started i'd like to give a shout out to transzen for sponsoring this episode of the old mate tom podcast so for those who haven't heard of transzen it's basically a nootropic that helps with brain health and just overall better mood you know when you have those days when you're feeling super hazy and you can't think clearly like maybe you smoked too much weed the night before you know it can happen and the next day you're just like, oh, I don't know, you just can't think clearly, you can't concentrate for a long period of time. So usually when I have those type of days, uh, I just pop a couple of these guys and there's, I'm not going to pretend like it's some crazy limitless pill and I have photographic memory and it's like, I become a thousand times more intelligent and things like this. Like, no, of course not. And if that pill does exist, I would be very wary of the price to be paid, right? But what I can say is that it definitely helps with clarity, as in like I can just see more clearly bit less of that haziness, you know what I mean? I can concentrate for longer. I just feel, I feel a little bit better. And you gotta think, even if it only affects you 1%, that 1% can give you the edge of like, maybe it can motivate you to, to read for longer, then you gain more knowledge and that inspires you to go work out and like, you know what I mean. So Enthusian have been very kind to the Your Mate Tom podcast listeners by offering a 15% discount. If you click on the link below or just go to intheozen.com slash Tom, that's intheozen.com slash Tom. And just keep in mind that you do get a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's nothing to lose, right? And on top of this, you're also supporting the podcast and future projects, which I'm juggling at the moment. But I also want to give a big thanks to Jason Stevenson for sponsoring this channel the last couple of months. So Jason offers free guided meditations. You can also get a free ebook on his website, jasonstevenson.net, or check out his YouTube channel, which I'll leave a link in the description box below. Dakota Wint, aka Dakota Earth, joined me on this episode of the Your Mate Tom podcast. And he's been on before. We had an awesome chat. I really like Dakota. I think we get along and agree with many areas of life. <laughs> And of course, us two crazy minds together created a very weird conversation, but awesome at the same time. Dakota talked about the time he smoked weed in Bob Marley's home, how he gave LSD to a Hindu monk. I know that's not what you call him, sadgus or whatever. Uh, you know, we talked about free will versus determinism, simulation theory. Uh, give me a moment. Uh, by the way, I did put timestamps, which will be in the description box below. Uh, yeah, so yeah, what did we talk about? Talked about duality, hermeticism, Australian culture, the bad trip I had with Adam from Psych Substance, Christianity and mushrooms. Like, pfft, guys, I think you are really going to enjoy this podcast. And just before I play, I do have an important announcement, and that is that we've opened a public Discord server. So this was originally a patron-only Discord server, and while we do have an exclusive Patreon Discord channel, uh, we've also opened up a public one. So I'll leave... A link in the description box below. I think it would be a good opportunity for you guys to hang out, who have common interests, maybe you want to talk about psychedelic, spirituality, <laughs> you know, and after talking to Dakota, I'm totally going to rip off his idea of getting people to send in questions via voice message, and I'm going to do this as a Patreon perk, so you guys who are supporting us on Patreon and who are a part of the Patreon Discord server, I'm going to give you guys opportunity to hand in your questions through voice message or video if you want. I think that'll be a cool idea. Um, I think it's something that, you know, I, I've seen it on the Theo Von podcast and Dakota, and I think it's a really good idea to uh, get the community involved. Yeah, so let us know what you think, because uh, we've got a couple guests in the lineup. We've got, oh, man, the man of massive projects that I am working on right now is freaking, 
How articulate is that? It's... <laughs> so please bear with me guys and thank you for being patient. Like I said, there are a lot of projects which I'm working on at the moment and it's gonna be on a level unlike any that I've reached before. And I'm really striving to develop my skills as a filmmaker and gonna, I'm starting to work with extra people. I've got a lot of overseas trip planned. And yeah, good shit's happening. I'm super excited. I'm gonna keep it on a hush hush for now, but just letting you guys know that there is a lot happening behind the scenes. So if I do upload late, this is why. There was something else I wanted to, to say before I, I left. But anyways guys, I think that's pretty much it. I'd just love to, of course, give a massive shout out to you Patreon supporters who have helped make this podcast and channel possible, you know what I mean? So I really wanna express my gratitude. You guys really do help contribute with the purchase of equipment and trips and the making of a lot of these high video productions. So, that being said, there was one more thing. After this podcast ended, me and Dakota did talk for about an hour or so, and I wanted to post some of this conversation somewhere. I, didn't, I don't want to put it here just because the official podcast was over. I don't want to put too much into this video, so I will be uploading, a, I guess you could call it an exclusive behind the scene footage, and I'm going to start working on more Patreon perks, hopefully give you guys some more incentive to, you know, help us out, then we can make better videos, hire some people, we've got some really cool shit happening, so if you feel the call to help, feel free, if not, again, comment, like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell, blah, 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 anyways, <laughs> peace out guys, see you in the next one. Alright, I knew there was something I was forgetting, Spotify, and on iTunes, so click on the links below, give us a 5 star rating, help us rise the charts. Anyways, peace out. Um, dude, I was like watching this video of yours. I don't know how when you posted it up, but you were like smoking weed in Bob Marley's home. Is that like for real? Yeah. Yeah, that's for real. Yeah, I was in Jamaica. That was the house he grew up in, though. That wasn't the house that he was like living in as like Bob Marley. That was little kid Bob Marley. Ah, uh, okay. But still, enough. yeah, it's still cool. That was like the room he grew up in. Yeah. And yeah, that, and like I got to smoke weed and just like the whole house, I was smoking weed in the kitchen and stuff. <laughs> that's so like, cool. And they just let you. They sell weed there at his really? house. So how does, yeah, how does it his work grave, over actually. there? Like in terms of like the legality of it, is it like how does it work? I don't know. It seems like it's just so such a part of the culture that no one really says anything. Okay. So I mean, you probably couldn't. You probably wouldn't do it walking around downtown in like the main areas. Right. But I don't know. Probably probably happens all the time. Actually, I don't know. It's I had no issues with it though. It's interesting yeah. like that because like I just went to Chile and Uruguay. One weed is illegal and one is completely legal, and I mean really mm. legal to the point where I literally smoked a joint on Congress in front of a cop. Legally, oh, wow, that's and cool. I don't know where else <laughs> you could do. Well, how was the weed? Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was like good quality. Yeah, well, because they have they. It's weird because I've got like you can get pharmacy weed, which is like yeah. your weakest strain. That's like your your go to work sort of weed, right? So it's like the, yeah. yeah. So it's not as strong, and that's if you. I know because not everyone can handle like you know your bubble gum, super skunk, Kush or whatever. Uh, so they've got that, and then they've got cannabis club weed. But from memory, apparently you can only buy weed over there if you buy, you have to buy like the premium of the premium stuff and you have to buy a minimum of 40 grams. 40 grams? Yeah, so it's like, like what, yeah. two ounces? <laughs> yes. That's so like, yeah. So if you want to buy from us, you better buy 40 grams minimum. Otherwise, we don't want your business. It's like, yeah. It's like, All right, it's I'm like going to click, I'll click record on this thing. I'll do, do you want me to do like a little yeah, sync yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll do a little sync clap. That way you, you can see what. Um, okay. but yeah, like that weed is like, pretty, like top of the top and then they've got, so you can grow it, like it's, you can buy it from the pharmacy or you can get it from a cannabis club. Well, I don't know what weed is like in Australia either. Like I'm pretty picky with weed as far as, I don't know, America, we're spoiled. We have such good weed in America. Right. And I don't know. I've never been to Australia, so I don't know what weed's like there, but like Jamaica, you would think Jamaica's got good weed because it's such like, you, you know, that's so? such a part of their culture. No, it's not. Horrible. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm sure there's got to be good weed somewhere around there, but not that I found. 
Not that yeah, I can sniff out. It, it kind of makes sense, actually, that the US would have the best weed because you guys want to be like the best in everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean yeah, that, like, really to be offensive, but it's like, it's, it's a good thing. I just noticed that. Like, every American stoner that I've met, like, the amount of stories and strains and the shit that you guys do, it's like, whoa. Like, in Australia, like, we yeah. get pretty hard on weed, but we just stick with bongs and joints. Like, you know what I mean? We don't take it to that next level of like dabbing oh, and yeah. all kind of They're, stuff it's turning stoners into scientists at this point <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that's fucking crazy yeah here the weed it's is so like yeah, it's i don't know it's pretty bad I, I would say uh compared to like canada or Ur chile uruguay uh wow. and other, other countries that i've been to the only countries that australia has better weed that i've experienced is like third world asian countries so <laughs> and that's not the best way. <laughs> What's the uh, legality like in Australia? Will you get in trouble if you get caught with it? Uh, well, it kind of depends state from state, but you're never going to get thrown in a cage for having weed possession. Cool. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. I, I've got caught with an ounce once. Uh, like me and my, a bunch of mates were like about to smoke in the park. And then we just saw like these four cops with guns going towards us. And I was full going to run, but I'm like, oh, but if I get, is it really worth running? For weed because i knew that i wasn't going to get like that much in trouble but yeah I was, but it was an ounce so I was, I was still unsure but yeah they came searched us took my bag and oh, those yeah, bastards yeah i know before i even got to smoke that was the worst part it's <laughs> so, so funny like i i always like when i'm confronted with moments like that it's so funny just to think of humans as just being animals on our planet it's just yeah. like come on you're so silly <laughs> and i was like it's in so that position like ready to sprint and the cop just yells from across the park, it's like, don't run, mate, we're fast. I'm like, oh. Oh, I probably would have ran. I know. Was he quick? Do you think he could have caught you? Uh, I'm sure they were really quick, but I'm, uh, I'm sure I would have outrun them for sure. I'm a very fast runner. So. What happened? Did you get in trouble? Uh, yeah, I just got a caution. So they took my weed. They wrote my name down. So basically, if I get like pulled over, they have the right to search me whenever they want now. Oh, and to stuff like that. But it lasts for five years. And if I get okay. caught three times for the same offense then they'll think about doing something. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Seems like a, that seems pretty liberal, actually. Yeah, it is. And that's especially like where I live in Melbourne, which is like the most liberal part of Australia, I, I would argue. So it's sort of like the San Francisco of Australia. So you've got like a lot of yeah. kind of art, music, multiculturalism, a lot of drugs, yeah. a lot of drugs. Yeah, we love our drugs here. Like it's fucking... Yeah. <laughs> I think humans do in general. Yeah. Yeah, it seems that way. Yeah, but that's so how did how did Australians end up in Australia? How did like you guys end up there? Is that is it true that you guys are prisoners? Yeah, we're English prisoners. We're, we're British convicts. That's why we they call. Yeah. That's why we say mate because we're mates, right? And you're 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 just kind of like a wonky version of an English accent because you got that prison slang. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Is that why? Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. How funny. So we, yeah, our values here is very like. Cause like I um like my mom's Chilean, so I had I grew up with that South American culture, and it's like so different. Yeah. Cause over there it's like more family values, you know what I mean? Like kids would stay with their parents until they're like thirty. It's very common, you know what I mean? Whereas here it's like you get yeah. kicked out when you're eighteen. All right, go yeah. get a fucking job, get the fuck out of here, or pay me rent. You know, it's like completely different. We value our, we value friends more than we do family here, generally speaking. That's what I found. Yeah. Yeah. But where, like, where, it's cool so, though. Huh? When, when did you just get home? You just got home recently, right? Dude, I got home last week and then within a couple of days I flew up to Queensland for like this epic crazy adventure. I don't know, have you heard of the Big Les show? Um, sounds familiar. And it's, a, it's a really, really famous car, uh, Australian cartoon show. And like I'm like good mates with the creator so I went up there. Oh, cool. And I like, dude, went crazy. At, what's really crazy is I fucking... Your, your mate Koi was was there yeah so we yeah so we went out with him for like a day but then yeah it was more like to record content I found mushrooms I tripped on mushrooms the first time in like three years Did, yeah it's been a while for you a right long long time man yeah this was like yeah me and Adam were kind of talking about that what happened he he said like you got you started getting like tripped out you kind of had like a Terrence McKenna thing you know like how Terrence McKenna freaked out towards the end and stopped taking everything yeah uh, yeah I basically because the the final straw which made me like kind of stay away from psychedelics for obviously for a long time was um yeah was that a boga trip man yeah the one that i did with oh, adam yeah. yeah and it just like it's one of those things like, i could write a whole freaking book about how horrific it was but now obviously i look back and it was like 
one of the best, most grounding character building experiences. Why'd you do that for? Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> for science? Right yeah. <laughs> what can I say? I'm yeah. a fucking idiot. Yeah. yeah uh, I so would funny. never ever do it in that situation again. You know what I mean? So, but I guess, Did you have- long story short, my connection with God got severed. And I got in that meaningless wow, really? nihilist. Yeah, for real. I was like in that. How come? I was living in that reality of that that life was basically a sick joke, and this was like this satanic before, realm. Before, before Iboga or no, after, after? That's what. No, that's how the, come? The that, Boga seem, that seems like the that seems like it like the opposite effect of what you usually hear. Um, yeah, I know. Um, I think it's. I don't know why that. Well, there's many reasons why it could have happened. Number one, because I I think I was like rushing back to the psychedelic experience too quick. Number two, I didn't do it with a shaman. I did it with Adam, and no offense to Adam, but he should not be guiding people on an, on an aboga trip. Neither should I, okay. and I'm going to assume neither should you, right? Like, it's a full-on shit. This, is, this isn't mushrooms. This isn't LSD. This is, like, like African shit, you know? Fuck, it's yeah. deep, you know what I mean? Ooh. Yeah. And, um, Would you go there? Do you want to go hang out with those guys? I would the, now. The Bwiti? I think not. It would have to call me, but I'm not... So well, I don't know if I would take it, but I'd be interested to go hang out with them and just kind of learn about it from yeah. their perspective. I actually yeah, think that cool. I need to go back to kind of reconcile loose ends because like I kind of opened that gate and now yeah. I think there's... With no closure. I, I, I've, I've, no, I've reconciled and had closure for I think 99% of the trip because I'm like, I don't know, I guess I'm just in a better place than I ever have in my life. So yeah. everything's gone well, but it was just two it's years good. of fucking hell, I guess. God, yeah. that's, that's, that's scary. Yeah, I, I made a video about Iboga once, and something I found that was really interesting because the thing that interests me about most about the psychedelic experience is like the, just the mystical stuff, mm. the spiritual experiences, or like you know we talked about. I think we talked about entity contact and stuff last time. That's the stuff that interests me, and whether or not that's real, I don't. I don't know. I mean, dreams are interesting too, and of those course. are pretty trivial. But well, I, I think it's irrelevant whether it's real or not. Like, cause yeah, get, I think so yeah. too. I think people get too caught up with like the woo woo side of like spiritual entities whereas if you want to look at it like i look at it as archetypes they're just collection of yeah. patterns that kind of transcend this physical plane whoa well oh, that was yeah. close I'm a sp- yeah um but yeah like, um, as long as i don't know well, i, I think if I, you learn from it that's all that matters a reoccurring that. thing that i found with people that were taking ibogaine is that they came into contact with an with like a black spirit yeah i found so many stories of like this black man coming to people really? in their iboga trips yeah all over Earwood, some on YouTube. Hmm. It was interesting. Yeah, it, it was a weird realm because a boga, compared to all trips that I've had, was it was the most like mentally, it was the most lucid that I've ever been. So it was like a hundred percent sober, concrete, clear thoughts. But then the realms that I was entering was obviously it like wasn't, what? It, yeah, wasn't, give me an it wasn't so fantastical. It was more. It was the second day that really fucked with me because I was like in this. Uh, how do you call this? Uh, like this, in this transient realm, I was always seeing death. Like I, it, it felt like imagine like your whole family and all your friends have died and feel that gr- yeah. you know that fucking horrifying grief. Yeah. Uh, imagine that feeling, but it just lasted for like nine months. In a plague of place. Yeah, and I felt I, I was like so like this is a joke. You know, you, uh, I was in this. I had this belief system like fuck. We're in this life. We have all these beautiful experiences just for it to get taken away. Yeah, and it wasn't a good. Yeah. It wasn't a good place to be because I was like tapped. How did you in. get out of it? What made you change that? Because uh, I mean, that's still true. Yeah, yeah, it is true. But I'm now I'm like just reconciling it much better. It's like you know, when it comes, it comes. Like it's just the way. Of, I, I kind of look at it now. It's like, well, but do you really want your loved ones to live forever? I feel like that would be more hellish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. In, in a way, my grandma, know. my grandma is getting ready to die right now, and uh, me and her talk about that. And I don't think anyone else talks to her about it. Yeah, and, and uh, it's just really interesting. About it? Uh, she says a couple different things. Like she said that maybe uh, in our next life, she made a joke that I'll come back as her grandma. So that was kind of <laughs> cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, I asked her. Last, I just was with her like two days ago, and I asked her like where, like I asked her where she thought her mom went, mm. and she's like, oh, heaven. So that's what she thinks. She's like she, she thinks she's gonna go to go to heaven and meet her mom and her grandma and stuff again. That's what she says she wants yeah, to happen. Well, that's that's beautiful. And I was like, man. yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's what I said too. I was like, yeah, I hope I hope it works out like that. And oh, she, and I told her. Yeah. I told her that uh, we have to come up with something 
so that when you are as a ghost, you can let me know that there's ghost. And she said, yeah, I will. Uh, <laughs> so she's going to come okay. like, flicker a little flame or something for me. We don't uh, know. We're going we're gonna to come up with a little code. Okay. And okay. She's, she said she's going to come to me after. That's cool. So she's so, like pretty cool with the, with the process? Yeah, she says she's not scared. She said every night she just says, if it's the night, then it's the night. And if not, then if not. She's always been real weird because yeah. I, she's, we have a big family. Okay. And uh, two of my uncles have died. Okay. And uh, I've never seen her cry over it. I've never really seen her be emotional. Really? And she's even, she's like carrying that right now too. She's not very, she doesn't mm. show any emotions about it. She's just kind of like, just kind of there. I don't know. Wow. Just and like, she's totally just normal. Accepting, she's, yeah. she's just accepting. Yeah. And it's just like talking to you. Like she doesn't have a dementia or anything. She's just a totally normal. Wow. That's. It's interesting. Well, that's really cool. That's why the place that I wish to be at while, you know, when I'm older. <laughs> Me too. You know? Yeah. And I guess Cause... in a way I'm glad that I went through all that shit while I was young. You know what I mean? So yeah. now when problems occur, it's like, well, compared to what I've experienced, this is not really much of a problem. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. What um, what nationality are you? Like, are you? Um, you we don't really know. I, I, took one, I took one of those DNA tests once and it came back like Middle Eastern and European. Stay Pretty vague thing. stuff. Yeah, just a little bit of everything. It's like a bunch of people just spit in like a <laughs> cup or something. I just crawled out of it. it I together. slimed out of it. Slimed out of a vagina portal and here you are. Yeah. Welcome. There I am. It's a pretty cool round. Slimed out of something. Yeah, it's very di- three-dimensional. Yeah, yeah. It can be pretty intense, but yeah, it's all right. It's pretty cool. It's weird. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I think like part of the reason even why I'd like to go back to that whole fucking bad trip, if you want to call it that, it's like... I think because I was too focused on like the spiritual side of things, like the higher dimensions, the entities going up there, source and all that kind of stuff, and not really being grounded in my humanness, and uh, yeah. and not seeing like now I believe the physical dimension is like this fucking divine and as sacred as it can be. You know, I truly Man. believe it. It's fucking crazy. Speaking of death, actually, I had a friend that killed killed himself like two years ago. One of my best friends lived Fuck. with them, traveled with them. And he was, uh, he was actually real sober, and he was against it. He was against, like, taking drugs and stuff like that. Just all, he was all a drugs? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he was, I mean, it's not like he, like, was, like, cringed when, he, when people did it, but that just, like, for him personally, it just really wasn't his thing. Not for him. And, uh, yeah, and he was going through a rough time, and I convinced him to go to Peru and take ayahuasca. And he ended up living there for a year, just diving deep with Wachuma oh, and with ayahuasca. And, um... He said that he there was one night he took as much Wachuma as he could just to see as far as he could go. He's like, I want to see what dimension I could get to. Mm-hmm. And he said he got so fucked. And uh, it took him just to where he was. And the realization was this is, is, this is, this is the far outness. This is the crazy dimension this that we're already trip, in. This is the trip, right? This is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is the trip. Like, you're, you're looking for something crazy. <laughs> like look where you're at <laughs> it's like alan Watts. you're chasing you you're chasing these it. weird shapes and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that it's like wake up yeah dude look out. exactly and i, I think that like because cool. there's two ways to approach because I'm, I'm still obviously fascinated by all these other woo woo mystical esoteric whatever the fuck you want to call it like it's it's interesting to me but i think the place that i was coming from in the past was more actually at escapism i wanted to yeah. escape the human the human condition the human suffering so i didn't want to identify myself as a human i was like no the self is an illusion this reality is meaningless it's all a game it doesn't matter and through a certain perspective that's true but it's a half truth isn't it it's not exactly the entire picture like i yeah. believe the human body I, is a part of our soul you know yeah i think so too i think the full picture is to recognize all parts of it all of it and it's hard yeah especially it is hard to do that because there's some yeah. very i don't you can't yeah. can't do it you no can't recognize you, all can, part. you can try <laughs> but yeah you can try yeah but it's like this this game, you know. I think like what what are your beliefs on this like physical reality? Like, do you think we're living in a simulation or? Uh, and I, this is all mental must, masturbation, it, so just yeah. <laughs> people. Well, it home, must be or? a simulation on some level because I mean uh, we we have, we have a limited perception of reality that's being filtered through our senses and through our body's limitations and stuff like that. It's a simulation to our physical sure. body. Yeah. You know, there's so much stuff going on, so we are in a simulation on some level. And I do think it's weird that you find patterns in the universe. Like you can break reality down to sort of equations to understand reality. That seems kind of weird. Like we're in some kind of mathematical, I don't know, Mm. video game or something. I think that's a little interesting. 
But um, I don't know. I don't know if I think we're in a simulation. I think it's kind of like just a... Uh, I think it's just a thought, kind of like a dream. And I think we're just kind of lost in this thought loop. And mm. I think we kind of shift between... I don't know why we always come back to this one. That's the thing I don't understand. It's why we come back to this body. Because it's like base reality but, that we all share. That's like the trippy thing about it. But all. the thing is, I think we, we probably spend more of our life in, in dreaming. You know, whether that be daydreams oh, yeah. or whether that be like just that's sleeping. We're probably, we, that's probably, we're probably more there than we are here. Yeah, I am anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am too. Yeah. I mean, who who lives in reality? Everyone lives so much in their thoughts. No one's living in reality. Yeah. So uh, I'd argue yeah. that we're in the dream world more than we're in the physical world. So I don't know what base reality is. Mm. Yeah, it's true. It's it's weird to think about like whether we are living in a simulation or not. And it does kind of make sense. Uh, I think this, and you can look at it both I think ways. I think well. the simulation. I think it's just the language that is a little bit of a turn off because simulation kind of implies that we're like like a video game or something. Right. And I don't think it's quite that. No, and that it's kind a of little simulation bit, kind of yeah. it kind of dis discredits the mystery a little bit too. I know what you mean. It's like like you said, the video game. I, I sort of agree, but at the same time, but I don't know. What what are your thoughts on like determinism and free will? Do you think that? We oh, have... I think we have zero free will. It's oh, absolutely really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's patterns in reality, the, the, that that means there's it's not chaotic. There's reproducible patterns that are happening and happening and happening. And I think if you could. If we could objectively view the universe, like step out and view a, a timeline of the universe, we would be able to see what this pattern is doing. And we'd be able to, if we were super gen intellectual geniuses, we would, could predict what's going to happen next based on where the dominoes are falling. Mm. And I think that's what's happening now. I think we have zero free will. I think the ego creates the illusion of free will by judging what's happening. But we're not in, we're not in control of anything that's happening. We're in control of the judgments of what we think is happening. Mm. That's what I think. Yeah, it's weird. What do you I think, think though? I do believe in free will, but to a very, it's very limited. In so far as once, that you, once you, for example, like in terms of having no free will and being deterministic and being completely controlled by your environment. But I think once you have the, the awareness of how the environment is affecting you, then you have choice, and you can either go towards that or away from that. But that's as far as it goes. I feel like you can't choose your destiny, you can't choose your final destination, but you can choose not to walk the path. That's as far as free will. But kind of thing. don't you think that choice, like that, um, the inspiration to not walk the path or to walk the path, that 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 comes from some external force. No, nothing that we, none of our choices or our thoughts, everything is given to us, whether that be through I don't know genetics or through culture or through your parents mm. from when you're raised. Every single thought you have is given to you like our we're sort of like these little kind of we just kind of like take little bits and pieces of all the stuff we find cool out in life mm. you know like we're we are our personality is a collection of all the things we've been inspired by in life it's not really anything not, nothing is original it's just little kind of remixes bits and pieces everything's a remix yeah a little remix yeah. yeah so i think like the inspiration to walk the path you're not you're not making that choice to be inspired or not it's coming from some previous condition well like you said like thoughts the thoughts that enter our mind, for sure, we have no control over that. But yeah. you can't, ch I believe, well, it's like Christopher Hitchens says, of course there, or is it, of course I believe in free will. I have no choice. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> so. R.I.P. Yeah. So in that, in, you know, going from that, um, well, I don't know, because it, it, determinism goes really deep, but I also believe that there is opposites and everything, like for the very fact like for the very like for determin for determinism to even exist as a concept, the opposite also has has to exist. So I'm just looking at yeah, polarity I, in a way. So it's like sort of saying of up exists but down doesn't exist, hot exists but cold doesn't exist. I think you know what I mean. Like yeah, I think paradoxes can exist. I think it's hard for our rational mind to understand because it's just not how our brains work. But I think paradoxes can exist. Yeah, well, it's infinite like, paradoxes. That, if like I, for if example, with, yeah. Sorry, go on. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for example, I think um, like everyone, and this is a thing that I even have been preaching on YouTube for a long time, that we are one with everything. Mm -hmm. But I'm starting to sort of dig deeper into this idea of oneness. And there's uh, this Indian saint, his name is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he has, a, he like came back and said, no, it's, this is, everything isn't one. Mm. He said, everything is one, but also separate. Yeah, and I thought that was cool because it, it is true. Everything is one and also separate. I mean, everything is one. We are one organism. We are all God essentially, but God is infinitely creating 
separateness eternally creating separateness to see what it means to be separate so if god is infinitely doing this for eternity then it's just what it is it's both we are one and we're separate well well, that's what um hermeticism they they refer to god as the all right which is the absolute which is everything's happening everything that ever could exist or ever has exist it, it just is i need to get into that but that's from the absolute perspective we live in the relative yeah. perspective and that's the paradoxes, right? Because yeah. you have these absolute truths that that doesn't necessarily apply to human life or it's not practical yep. to live that way. Because like, yeah, okay, if everything's one, then wouldn't me... I don't drink, need to eat. Yeah, I don't need to eat. What's the point of drinking this water? If I eat plants, I'm just killing... I'm just murdering myself. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it yep. gets to a point where you got to reconcile the relative aspects of reality. It's like, you can say, yeah, reality is an illusion from the absolute point, but from the relative point, it's the as real as it gets and you have yep, to and live I think a lot, I think a lot of it is real. real otherwise yeah a lot of people get caught up in that get caught up in the oneness that they completely ignore that and they just try to live their lives through this kind of weird yeah this weirdness and you well, just gotta yeah. get well it's like that balance you know it's like yeah look up at the stars but fucking watch where you're walking man otherwise you're gonna yeah, trip exactly. over and fuck yourself up it happened to me yeah. man and i got really burned really fucked me mentally you fell into a fire yeah i fell into a fire <laughs> Yeah, the scars healed though. It's, it looks cool though, so I'm, I'm yeah. all right. Character building. It's such an Australian thing. <laughs> you're is... gonna catch no. You're gonna catch no American falling in fires, mental fires. No, I'm just kidding. We're we yeah. are constantly in a mental fire over here. Yeah. Now nah, here's where our attitude is always like, yeah, it's. Fine. You guys are Sorry, reaction Adam. fires. I feel like I feel like all Australians do is make bonfires and collect twigs and yeah. stuff like that. Well, it's funny because like um, where I live <laughs> yeah. in Melbourne, it's like. Yeah, it's pretty Australian, but I, when I went up, went, up, went up north, I went to a trek with my mates, and he's like, take me through this offbeat trek. Like, I sliced my foot open. I'm like all scratched and bruised. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> and he's like, in the start, he just like has a stick just tapping each rock that he goes past. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I just let him know that the snakes that we're here. Tut, tut, tut. That's tut, so tut, funny. Tut. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're poisonous ones that will kill you within an hour. I'm like, oh, cool. Sweet. You want to know a funny story? Uh, one time I tried flirting with Steve Irwin's daughter. <laughs> Which she didn't go for it. No. Yeah, she didn't go for it. Hell could you imagine that? Imagine that. Imagine if I was half Australian. I got my, uh, I get my green card, half Australian. I'm a, I become an Irwin. Be I become a Wint slash Irwin. My tra- new travel series coming out. Me and Steve Irwin's daughter traveling the world. She's wrestling fuck- crocodiles. She's gonna be smoking with DMT that, yeah. in the background. Fucking with animals. <laughs> oh, that's a rhino. I'm gonna stick me thumb up its ass. <laughs> Might as well. That's like Steve Irwin's like. This is the most poisonous snake in the world. Just one bite will fucking kill you. I'm gonna fuck with it. <laughs> I think <laughs> South right, Park. Steve Irwin. I, I think South, South Park did a parody. Nah, I love Steve Irwin. Everyone, like, if you bag Steve Irwin here, oof, Aussies will not take. Oh, is he? That. Is he? In, he's he's an na- American national treasure, and he's in, not even American. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. You get people will beat you up here too. You say something about Steve. You wear an anti Steve Irwin shirt around me or any of my friends. Well. We'll yeah, throw a egg you. Yeah, you don't fuck with Steve Irwin, man. No, nah, because he was a genuinely good dude. He had a good heart. Yeah. Yeah, man, that sucks that the way guy. he died. Do you and, see the video of him getting time, stabbed with of that? All the fucking ways that he went. Yeah. It's like a, a wicked. Yeah, it's like a bit of a wicked sense of humor by the universe. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> is. The universe sh- does have a test. It. It's morbid sense of humor. Yeah, it does. Dude, that's fucking crazy. Where have you... Because you've been traveling a lot these last few months. I saw that you went to, like, Palestine. Yeah, dude, Israel, Palestine's wild. And you went, you went yep. through a bit of uh, turbulence over there. Do you want to tell us about yeah. that? Uh, let's let's see. You about Where can it, I start yeah. that story at? So, um, basically, I was in, in India, and um, I got inspired by some of the little myths around India about Jesus. Okay. And I don't... Maybe I don't, I don't necessarily... Like, I'm not preaching that they're real or anything like that. I just think it's interesting. And uh, there's a lot of Israelis that travel in India. So I was just kind of on that Jesus vibe. And I just uh, just from like a kind of uh, cultural perspective, you know, just kind of out of cultural interest and spiritual religious interest. So I was like checking out all these Jesus spots in India, which I made some videos about. And uh, then I was like, I'm just going to go check out the actual Jesus spots mm. in Israel and Palestine. So I flew there. And while I was in is I actually loved Israel. I was so surprised how, like, you'd think the Middle East is, you know, when you think of the Middle East, especially as an American, we're so brainwashed to think, like, sand and camels and, like, yeah, AK-47s sure. and stuff. It's like, 
It's like hanging out in Los Angeles or like Venice, California. Right. Well, it's like how a lot of Americans view Australia. They just look at it as a big fucking desert. It's like, no, that's yeah, like this, like I've me. never been there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> funny. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Um, Go on. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's gay people holding hands. You can kind of smell weed in the distance. People skateboarding. It's like a totally normal oh, place. That's crazy. And uh, that's just in Israel and like Tel Aviv, sp- right. specifically Tel Aviv. And then um, while I was just kind of checking out these spots, I got to Jerusalem. That was really cool to go to all the Jesus spots. There's two tombs of Jesus, two official tombs that people argue over, that the Christians fight over. They don't know which one's real. Mm, okay. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the one that is traditionally uh, viewed as the, the spot where Jesus was crucified and buried. So I got to hang out there. And I found it really interesting to see all the Christians like – lounging on the tomb of Jesus on their phones and stuff like that. Like coming from India, you can't even wear shoes in a temple. Like if you wear shoes in a temple, they'll like yell at you, like, you know, push you out of the temple. Really? I'm sure you've been to Asia. You can't wear shoes into a temple. Oh, yeah, no, they take that stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. They take spirituality. They take that stuff serious. Yeah. And no, not in the middle, not in Jerusalem at all. There's people taking selfies with the Jesus thing, like lounging oh, really? on it and sitting on it. Next door, they're selling like crown of thorns and, cheap crosses and it's just like completely commercial um but it was really cool still to check out and uh while i was there someone was like banksy you know who banksy is a street artist yeah 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 Yeah. someone was like banksy just opened a hotel in bethlehem in palestine you should go check it out it was really cool nice yeah i saw the pictures on instagram looked fucking awesome dude yeah and i was kind of in my video zone so i was like yeah that'll be a cool video i'll go stay there Mm -hmm. and uh i went there and then for some reason while i was the day i got into palestine which you have to cross through like military zones and through a huge wall that's got barbed wire all over it basically kind of like what america's trying to do to mexico but a million times more fucked up fuck and uh so i had to cross this thing and the day i'm in palestine just so happens to be like the the worst war between palestine and israel in like years really 500 rockets are getting shot into into uh, oh. Gaza. How did Gaza shooting. How, how did this start? Oh, dude, they've just been fighting forever. Uh, and it just are re- you familiar? Yeah, I, I am. Know? Yeah, yeah, like bits and pieces, not a lot. Yeah. <sighs> um, like, so, anyways, how did, how did it get triggered again? Yeah. Though, did someone just like I don't throw, know? I throw think. Oh, okay, so, or... <laughs> um, so Hamas, Hamas is considered a terrorist organization in uh, in Gaza. They're basically a, a bunch of rebels that are revolting against the occupation of the Israeli military in Gaza. Mm. So it's like a bunch of rebels that have stood up against the Israeli military. Right. And they, they get a bunch of funding, so they get rockets and stuff like that. And they just they just kill each other all the time. And uh, their leader got killed. So that's why they did it. Shit. Yeah, is- Israel killed their leader. So they just were like, fuck you guys, and started shooting rockets at them. But I was, in, I was in the West Bank, so I was on the other side. Right. And could you feel that still... hostility in the air? No. no? Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. You could feel the hostility in the air, but you couldn't... I didn't feel any any bombs or anything like that go off. Right, right. But you could hear gunshots in the distance. I saw tear gas getting thrown. Um, just where I was... So the Banksy Hotel is amazing. It's really cool. It's all about... Um, it's all about what's going on there through the Palestinian perspective. Mm. So it's like, a, it's like a political art exhibition. It's really cool. It's like interactive and it's really interesting. And if anyone ever is in Palestine for whatever reason, <laughs> go there. <laughs> and Bethlehem is, is also where Jesus was born. So they have the church and nativity there where Jesus was born. And like, yeah, right. you know, God's, God's land is a war zone. And when I was walking against wow. the wall, because it's filled with original Banksy's and just amazing art all over, all, like for, you know, miles. And I was just walking this wall and, um, you see, like, there's big towers with Israeli soldiers in them, and you'll see kids will come in the morning, and they'll throw rocks at the towers, and the Israeli soldiers will piss in bottles of, like, empty Coke bottles or something and throw piss at people. Whoa. Oh, yeah, it's f- fucked up. I got all, the, I got all this on, on, on film, too. That's and uh, I was walking around, and it just kind of looks like trash on the ground and stuff like that and i just ignored it the first day and then i went with, on a tour with the hotel they take you on a tour to a refugee camp in palestine mm. and uh, they took me along the same route i went but the dude was like going through the rubble in the ground and just pulling out tear gas empty tear gas sound bombs I'm, i just walked past it i didn't even realize it was just all bomb residue around me fucking hell that sounds intense bro yeah it was yeah. intense and then i went to um, a place called hebron 
and I'm just like b- fucking blindly walking through Palestine, like on a Jesus tip. Like I didn't mean to get sucked into this. Right. And I met this guy Ayub. I meet this just a local. His name's Ayub. He's a cool guy. I still talk to him. Mm. And uh, he's just ha- a taxi driver. And he picked up this Dutch couple. And for some reason, he decided to make me go with him and this Dutch couple to Hebron. And like these people paid him, and he just made me go. I don't know. I have no idea why. So I'm like in invading these this people's trip (laughs) and he he took me to hebron and i'm wearing a shirt that says i love palestine in arabic and it's a big bright yellow shirt so i'm like standing out like a sore thumb and hebron is like it's in palestine but it's completely occupied by israel if you go there they got like israeli flags and shit hanging up and like the palestinians just kind of yeah it's a fucked up situation yeah yeah but anyways israeli military actually detained me because i was wearing that shirt they pulled the gun out on me Pulled me into a room, offered us wearing a shirt that says, I love Palestine. Whoa. I was like, bro, I'm in Palestine. I can't wear a shirt that says Palestine yeah. in Palestine. What did he say? And, uh, well, at first he was like, uh, asked me for my passport. Who do I know here? What am I doing here? Do you speak Arabic? Do you speak Arabic? He kept asking me that. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't speak Arabic. And then he let me go. He pulled his gun out, out, out on me the first time. Oh, and made me give him, give him, him a, a, a huge... There's a picture of it, actually. Those Dutch people took a picture of it. So there's oh, like a picture shit. of the guy with his gun pulling me into the room. Like a machine, this is all in like the video. a machine gun? A big, huge, like, oh, yeah, like a machine yeah, gun. No. Yeah, right. Like an AK-47 or something. I don't know. That's insane. And uh, he took me into some, like, higher-up officer. And that guy was just like, he's a tourist. Like, leave him alone, which mm-hmm. I was really, like, happy about. Yeah, yeah. But the guy, the guy that took me in there was a total ass. That was like skinhead, like oh. well, I guess he's not skinhead, he's Jewish, which is I don't know. But anyways, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. uh, <laughs> I know he was he had a skinhead though. Yeah. But he was like a total, yeah, he was total uh, loose cannon. Ah, it's like he was yeah, just in that mood. He just wanted to start something. He's oh, like, dude, they all do. I'm ready for so war. like, so they Israel built this wall, which yeah. is an illegal wall by the United Nations because okay. it's actually in Palestinian territory. Right. And um, they built this wall to stop Palestinian extremists from suicide bombings or killing people or whatever, which, like, fair enough if that's why you did it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't want my family being blown up by, while they're on the bus or something. Yeah, of course. And um, But the thing that's fucked up is that Israel wants Palestine, ultimately. They don't want Palestine to exist. So these Israeli settlers will illegally move into Palestine. And the fucked up part is is that Palestinians don't have access to water 24-7, but the Israeli people that illegally move into Palestine get access to water 24-7. Whoa. In Palestine. is that fucked up? Fuck. And the Israelis control the Palestinian water. Wow, so it's a really fucking intense situation It's a real fucked up, it's yeah. a real fucked up situation over there. Still yeah, I got, I got real... Dude, I was, having, I was having nightmares. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. Because you were in you that can hear, fucking like, environment, right? I could only, you can hear imagine. gunshots and stuff, like, just while I'm filming the videos. Fuck. I thought I've been to yeah. intense places, but Jesus. I, didn't, I just got thrown into it. I didn't know what I was doing. And that's I just kind of, supposed like, to be God's land, right? I guess so, yeah. It's, yeah, so it's supposed funny. to be God's land. It's, it's so funny because you, you, look, you look at the polarity of that kind of stuff. And, like, for example, I went to Chile where this place used to be a prison. And now it's like the most hippiest, beautiful, loving fucking environment ever. Same with Australia. Australia used to be a prison. We like live in a yeah, pretty right? awesome country. And this yeah, one's like, cool. And this one's like Jesus, God's land, and look what's happening. Like, fuck. It almost makes sense in a demonic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yeah, in a fucked yeah. up way. It kind of does. Jesus, yeah. man. So, yeah, that's that. And then I went to Amsterdam after that, and it was just, I couldn't even. It was the most culture shock ever, because Amsterdam <laughs> yeah? is so organized and so everyone's smoking weed openly and it's just like jesus christ you guys have no idea there's a war 10 hours away wow everyone's just like, and how not that, that i expect everyone in, Am- in amsterdam because i always got told like oh weed's legal over there but not really it's like to a certain extent oh i don't know i was smoking weed everywhere yeah but can you smoke um, weed in front of the presidential's office legally <laughs> i'm not sure <laughs> i'm sure people because... do it all the time <laughs> but legally <laughs> it, it was so cold though I, yeah. it was I, I was just kind of like trying to process my life. Yeah, so I didn't right. have that good of a time. So in- integration phase. Good to smoke weed, I guess. Doing... Yeah, it was nice to relax there. Yeah. Well, it was like, because uh, like, I quit weed for a while. I did, I did like a weed series on my channel. And then I went to Uruguay where it's like 
it's so it's not I, I wouldn't even say legal is the right term because it's so far beyond what people think is legality it's like you literally you like you can grow six plants in your house like fucking you can do your anything like we'll we'll go eat like a burrito and then on the um like while waiting for it all right we're just going to be outside for a smoke smoke a joint go in back nice that's cool i went to a cannabis museum i smoked weed with a tour guide inside the museum like, nice. it's just like create up because to me i'm not used to this because i'm australian so i've never been in a country where weed is legal so it was just like fucking yeah but it, what's funny is actually because i've because i'm making a documentary in chile and uruguay and in chile the weed it's very i wouldn't say it's harsh because since 2015, they have decriminalized it, but it's still illegal. But this is an interesting fact, is that Chile has the highest rate of stoners per capita in all of Latin America. Right? That's but it's interesting. Illegal. You know, it's interesting, right? And you look yeah. at Uruguay and it's completely legal. So just as many people, if not more people, smoke weed in Chile, except that it's just in the shadows. Whereas in Uruguay, it's just out in the light which I found very funny because like in Uruguay, I'm like, well, I'm smoking weed legally on the beach. Oh, I'm in the plaza. I'm in here. I'm in there. And then in yeah. Chile, I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm like, oh, wait, I'm kind of doing the same thing here anyway, but except that it's just not, <laughs> it's just not legal. I got some cool uh, documentary-esque stuff coming out. Um, I'm going to Costa Rica in five days, six days. I'll be in Costa Rica. And then yeah. after Costa Rica, yeah, I'm going with my family. It's not, I'm not doing too much crazy stuff there. But after Costa Rica, I'm going to Mexico and Oaxaca. And um, my friend, actually, you know, you know who Maria Sabina is, right? Of course, yeah, yeah. She, I put her I'm in, going she to my documentary, my latest. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we talked about it before, but yeah. I'm going to the village where Maria Sabina lived, and there's um That's this crazy. guy in that. When when are you oh, going? March. So real pretty soon. Oh, okay, now too soon for me. March. This guy just came back. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, I could join you. Yeah. Do you speak Spanish? So this, no. Okay. Un poquito. Un poquito. So there's a. There's a uh, this guy who made a documentary called um, Little Saints. Little Saints. And it's based on this it's okay. based on this uh, this curandera named Natalie. Mm -hmm. And this guy is gonna be there when I'm there, and he's gonna introduce me to her. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's gonna be really cool. And I'm just gonna I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna film for a little bit. And they do salvia. A lot of salvia goes on there. And they do the traditional so, way you chew it, right? Yep, it's they the, yep, they chew it. Have you done salvia? So, before? no, never. I've always been too scared. Yeah. Okay. But I think it's a Western way of doing it, where they smoke a high concentration of it in a bong, I, I, you I, know, I, with like other people who are like, oh, yeah. look at this ticket. So it's like, I think yeah. it's a little bit of a different <laughs> set and setting. Something I now. find interesting is that Selvia is a sage. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking crazy. It would yeah. be interesting. I don't know if I'll do it, but it kind of just depends. I'll, I'll chew it. Yeah. If it's there and it feels right, it's like um, my... Like the first time I tripped in fucking almost two years was like in a setting that I never thought I would do in my life, roaming the city of South America. But it was like one of the best, most profound trips I've ever had. It was just a quarter yeah. tab of LSD. But like, you know, I was able to see really harsh aspects of reality and not freak out, which is like, whoa, that's pretty yeah. cool. Like seeing the polarity of like a homeless person fucking just surviving. And then you see like a dad with her with her daughter riding on a bicycle, having the time of their life, like right next to each other. You know, I could imagine in India, the polarity would be even more extreme. Yeah. Um, but it was fucking cool. It was like, you know, when you go in those, because, you know, a quarter tab isn't that much, but it's more kind of opened up the receptivity a little bit. So it was like in this constant flux of synchronicities constantly. It was like that thing, like just life is a trip. Everywhere we went, it was just attracting just cool, like symbology and this and that. It was just... It's really, really yeah, cool. Yeah, dude. Life is a trip. I'm actually thinking, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to Ethiopia in May. So I got like a bunch of stuff I'm trying to cram in over these next few months. But I'm going to go to Ethiopia in May. Have you ever seen those? It's called the Mercy Tribe. They have that big lip plates. Yeah. Have you seen those people before? Why do they do Yeah, I'm going to go try to. Um, well, there's a few different. I don't know where it stems. There's a few different theories about where it stems from. One of the theories is that it's intentional disfiguration right. for females so that back in the day, uh, it would discourage slave trade and people that would like try to rape these girls and stuff like that. So they would intentionally make themselves ugly so that they oh. would be worth less. So oh, some sure. people believe that's where that's where it stemmed from. But now the tribe uh, uses it as a symbol of like sexual maturity. Okay. For women, only women do it. And uh, what's something that's interesting is that because this tribe has been exposed to the the world now, mm -hmm. the younger women are like saying they don't want to do it anymore. They're like. 
sorry, I'm not fucking ripping a hole in my face right. <laughs> for to Break prove it. that I'm yeah, yeah. ready to have sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. so I thought that would be an interesting story to cover. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to try to just camp out with this tribe and see how far I can take that. Yeah, just by yourself and, uh, or are you taking just, people with you? Uh, I'm taking a video guy with me. Okay, Yeah, cool. just one guy. Nice. He actually lives in Melbourne. He's one of my best friends. Really? Yeah, he's English, though. He's living there, working at a farm. Just, oh, he, I don't know. He's English, Milking though, cows yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, no, he's over there milking no cows. Yeah. No, nah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, you, you, you guys should hang out, actually. He's really cool. Yeah, we'll connect us. Um, yeah. I, I basically um, but, live in the country, anyway. <laughs> yeah, we're going to stay there two weeks and just... Nice. Just see what happens. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I have a friend that lives there and he's kinda he speaks the language and he already has a rapport with the tribe and stuff like that. Hmm. And he's saying no problem, we can camp out with them. I don't know how I'm I'm gonna see what kind of psychedelics they use or if if any kind of they have any medicines, ceremonial medicines. Yeah, it'd be interesting because not all tribes like a lot of ancient tribes have some form of a sacrament, like a psychedelic medicine that you use. But not all. Because I noticed uh interesting like in Chile um, it's one of the only indigenous tribes that's still fighting against the government till this day. It's fucking crazy. Like they, the Spanish conquered all of South America except for Chile. It was the last man standing and they're still Damn, fighting. That's cool. They're bots. They're like fucking warriors, man. But they don't take psychedelics cool. as far as we know. They're just so in tune with nature. and Yeah. So it's- Ethiopia has a history with weed. So I'm interested to see if they do any of that kind of stuff because that's where the Rastafarian movement kind of stems out of is Ethiopia. Yeah, right. Interesting. I've always wanted yeah. to, because um, like you know, we're talking about Jamaica before, and like I know that they have mushroom retreats, and mushrooms isn't even for they're legal. Yeah, yeah they're legal there. Mushrooms. Is it true that because my friend was telling me that mushrooms isn't even considered to be a drug? It's not even like a thought. Like what? Mushrooms are legal? Why? Like it's so silly. Is that true? Yeah, I, I, I imagine. I didn't really get to talk to too, too many people about it, but there's people selling mushroom tea and stuff like that. Right. So yeah, I imagine they kind of just look at it like they look at weed you know that's why it'd be it would be interesting maybe one day we can uh organize a trip and go down there a trip to jamaica uh, i would love to yeah to i it. actually uh the place where they do that i don't know if it's the same place you're, th- you're talking of but there's a mushroom retreat center mm. in a place called treasure beach that place is my favorite place in jamaica it's like the perfect place to trip if you yeah. were going to be in jamaica okay so and i'm i, I kind of talked to those guys a little bit so if we ever went there they would definitely hook us up yeah that'd be cool because i love like even this time like um i've traveled like all my life but this was the first time like i immersed myself in the level that i did it was like literally i became a chilean and when in uruguay i became an uruguay do you speak spanish yeah fluent yeah my whole life i learned yeah. that shit yeah. that's cool so it helps that's why when i went can to they Mexico, tell you're australian when you speak start speaking spanish if I speak for like a, a, a certain period of time, they're like, there's something, and I tell them I'm from Australia, I'm like, oh, I knew there was something up with your accent, but I can get away with it. But only in That's Chile, cool. any other country, because I have it, when I speak Spanish, I have a Chilean accent, so right. everywhere else, uh, it wouldn't really, yeah, that would catch me quicker. But I'm practicing more and more and more Spanish, so like I'm almost fluent, fluent, but I'll get there. What about uh, the Aboriginals in Australia? Do they have any kind of cool psychedelic stuff uh yes but they will never tell the white man really so you know but so we know they have something obviously oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. i've got told by friends who've been in that sort of culture and they're like no nah, they will never tell us because we ruin everything <laughs> yeah it's true and i'm not even so, saying so that in, like does uh, that mean that they're does that mean that they might have some something that we just don't know about dude australia is like i wouldn't be surprised if australia is the home of the most diverse psychedelic plants in the world it's fucking crazy there's everything here like even if you look and how, at Acacia, how explored is it? Like if you look at if you buy Changa or DMT online, there is a ninety percent chance it comes from Australia. Like it's hmm. fucking, it's everywhere. And you you know like we got because we got like crazy diverse wild like I don't know it's, Australia is weird man because we're like the Aboriginals are uh, believed anyway to be the first indigenous people of Earth, right? Some people will even go as far as to say that it even precedes Africa, which would be fucking crazy. But we're like, Wait, what does that mean? But we're the, they're the first uh, indigenous people, the oldest. They've been around the, the longest. First indigenous people. So uh, when, well, wouldn't the African people be the first indigenous people? That's what was believed, but now some some people, I'm not saying it is or it isn't. But do they, find, have, do uh, they find some kind of fossils or something, some archaeological evidence that points to Australia? Yeah, I think so. I haven't reached it. Okay. I, you know, I do told me, so I'm like, now I'm just spitting okay. out this fucking thing. I read, oh, yeah, yeah. I read it on the internet, know, it must be true. <laughs> okay, it might, it might be true, but as far as I know, is that the oldest human fossils are 300,000 years old and found in Morocco. Yeah, I think this yeah. is, I don't know how old this was, but anyway, some people believe that it yeah. is. 
and yeah. and you look at our civilization, we're one of the newest. So even in the terms of polarity, it kind of sort of makes sense. Like we're the oldest, but we're like the last sort of kind of wake up and build this civilization. And wow. could you imagine? Yeah. We haven't gone through a revolution, for example, you know, we haven't, we're very, we're a baby society. Just in the 60s, we we're stealing Aboriginal people from their parents because they weren't pure. Wow. This is in the 60s. This was a government thing, dude. It was called the stolen generation. It's totally fucked up. This was one people ago. You know what I mean? This wasn't like hundreds of years back. We're like, oh yeah, sorry. So like the divide yeah. between Aboriginals and Australians, I don't see any. Ever. Right? They're so... Where are like, they all at? in their own in the north. communities yeah in the north there's a lot more in the north for sure um but there we haven't integrated aboriginal culture into our own in fact yeah because I, I remember i grew up in a very very kind of aussie bogan or like redneck as you would know it sort of area and i had an aboriginal friend who was half aboriginal and i remember this other dude told him like go back to your own country like you know what i mean like the level of ignorance it was fucking great. Yeah. I'm not saying this is all Australians, of course, but just the very fact that one person can even say that to an Aboriginal is like, pfft, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. And I, I mean, that's like I, the Americans are always like that. Yeah, and like I look at, because um, I went to New Zealand and that marries, they're much more integrated into the culture. Like they combine the names mm. with like cities and suburbs and like they're much happier and like, hey, what's going on, bro? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. It's a you can tell the spirits are much higher, whereas here there's a lot more like, mm, I don't know. It's not well, good. Yes, it's a, it's a it's a healing wound still. Yeah, dude. Yeah, like. I mean, we we killed thirty three million natives here, indigenous people here, and it's still. Wow. This, Wasn't that like one of the biggest even... massacres of all time or something? Ah, probably. I mean, it's definitely where Hitler got the blueprints for concentration camps. Was oh, by really? was by what we were doing to the natives. Yeah. Oh shit. That's crazy. Or vice versa. Yeah, it must have been the it must have been Hitler from the natives because that was way longer. But yeah, that's uh, crazy. Yeah, so we still got a lot of a, uh, well, yeah, a lot more integration to do. So. Yeah. But, but like I said, you know, we're still a baby society. Like, you know, people are. I love Australia. And this is my fucking home. So don't Aussies listening to this don't get upset or offended. But we live in a fucking uh, bubble here. Yeah, you gotta acknowledge truth. Yeah, we live in a fucking bubble. And in terms of naive optimism and spirituality, that's so high over here. Because you even got to think about it in perspective. Because when I went to South America, you know, because I really immersed myself in that culture and I was like asking so many questions and I was like really wanting to understand the history and, and why they do what they do. And it's interesting because in a lot of these other continents, like in South America or Europe, you're surrounded by other countries and cultures and you're, it's all bleeding into one another. So you're aware of this kind of stuff. Whereas in Australia, we live in a freaking island. It's <laughs> yeah. just ocean, right? And yeah, it's very multiculturalism here. Well, at least in Melbourne and Sydney, I wouldn't say that like the rest of Australia, but we're not as uh, open and... Oh, I don't even want to say that because I'm speaking for a whole country and I sound like a douchebag right now. But you, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like we're not yeah, as, yeah. as uh, open. <laughs> I would love to come to Australia one day. I don't know why I don't feel any attraction there. Something that I am interested about Australia, though, is specifically with the aboriginals is their idea about the rainbow serpent because that was been my experience with the dmt i went to that beings festival was a rainbow serpent. that was my first, is that a festival that was my first yeah. festival yeah they opened up but that's an idea right up. yeah it is an idea yeah like the dream the yeah. dream time uh rainbow serpent yeah they're all into that kind of stuff so yeah. cool i don't understand like ah man i don't know i just don't understand how these ancients have were like so they had maps of these dimensions that we are just now kind yeah, of re re-figuring out the knowledge that the aboriginals still have to this day on how like nature works is fucking incredible that's why like i want to yeah i, I really want to like explore like my own backyard it's funny how we all travel to other countries but we don't explore our own country kind of thing and i've been realizing this last couple of years like fuck australia is like incredible man there's so many yeah. things to explore and it does have a deep culture and i love aussies as well like because like Generally speaking, Australians are pretty laid back and they're cool and and the girls are. We guys got the prettiest girls. We, oh, yeah, yeah I, guess. I love Australian girls. Oh, I guess it depends because I, I like my. Spanish. Well, I guess you're I, from I, there. So I like my Spanish know, women. <laughs> Ooh, I love I love Spanish women yeah, too. So I'm um, yeah. Well, actually, because all the hot Australian, the, the hottest Australians that I've seen are usually like some form of a mixed race anyway. 
it's, it's not really. It's yeah, I guess like Australia, Australia, it's a pretty vague thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What is it? Because Australia, we don't have culture. Like, what's yeah. Australia? Ask an Australian what's Australian food, and they'll say all this kind of shit, and it's like, no, that's from Britain, that's Greek, that's this. Pizza. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, fish and chips, that's not Australian. You know what I mean? Oh, shepherd's pie, that's British. So it's, so funny. you know what I mean? Like, we don't have an. Our Australian culture is just all of the world combined. Yeah, in one I guess at least thing. America can claim, like, cheeseburgers and. Yeah. Coca Cola. Oh, yeah. America, because America's much older. Um. But it's weird because Australia, we grow up in, like, I grew up with American culture. Like, fucking every day would quote The Simpsons and South Park and all these American shows. Yeah. And we wouldn't really watch Australian shows and movies. I couldn't even tell you one. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, we don't, yeah. So it's like we support Americans more than we do our own. Until they get famous. Then it's like, oh, yeah, Hugh Jackman, he's awesome. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and most people probably think Hugh Jackman's American, actually. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> Yeah, Hugh Jackman's cool though. Um, I love Hugh Jack. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's an interesting culture though, man. Because I love because I'm a mixed race, so I never really belonged in anywhere. Like I went to Australia, I got made fun of for being Mexican. I'm not even Mexican. I'm Chilean. <laughs> it's all the same to them. Yeah, it's like oh, you come from Chile? Yeah, you speak Mexican, don't you? It's Spanish, you moron. Speak well, Mexican. Yeah, yeah, full on, man. Because we don't have many Mexicans <laughs> in our country. So funny. Because it's probably so. Far you know, away. I find. I find it uh, very interesting to see like these uh, Mazatec sh- shamans and these people in Oaxaca that are kind of doing these ancient mushroom and salvia rituals through the kind of perspective of Catholicism. I think that's really kind of interesting. I think that's like cool the little as well. saints. Yeah, well, it is cool. It is. It's interesting. It's, it goes deep. The symbology of Catholicism. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know too much about it. Well, just the last couple. We actually, for whatever reason, once I was going through that whole existential crisis, I was just kind of studying like a lot of Jordan Peterson that opened me up to like Catholicism because I grew up Catholic and I just went against it because I was the resistance so I went atheism yeah. and then I found that atheism is just as fucking retarded as you know what I mean and then I kind of went agnostic and now kind of delving back not being a Catholic but just looking at the symbology and the metaphors and what it actually means on a on a whole holistic kind of level and it's, yeah it goes really deep man so and I heard in Mexico as well, I think I saw a Vice documentary. Might not have been a Vice documentary, but they take, there's this church where they take mushrooms in ceremony and then they sing to Jesus. Hell in yeah. In church. Like mushrooms. <laughs> Could you imagine? And then other Catholics <laughs> tell you that mushrooms open up demonic portals. So it's like, it's such a contrast, man. In different, even within the same religion, there's so many sections of, you know, no, we're right, no, this is wrong, no, this is evil, this is good, no, we've got the right path. So, so I've always had this, idea, like, okay, so I don't know if anyone's made this connection, but as I've been looking into this Mazatec tradition and stuff like that, I've kind of made this connection. Okay. So this might be a, this might be a, some kind of scientific revelation right here on your podcast. Beautiful, all right, um, hit me. Uh, so the idea that Jesus is a mushroom is obviously, people talk about that a lot these days, but you could find mushroom art, Specifically, not so much in the Middle East where Jesus may have been. Um, you don't find it too much in the Middle East, but you do find it uh, outside of what um, 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 the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, what's that guy's name? Um, uh, fuck. No, Moses. I don't know. I'm very. No, 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 no. The guy that the guy that trans the, that helped translate the Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> I'm like Moses. <laughs> oh come on! How did I forget his name? Anyways. Yeah. So, um, John Marco Allegro. John okay, Marco Allegro okay. is one of the guys that helped decode the Dead Sea Scrolls from this ancient Hebrew into English and whatever, and he said that, Jesus, it's a mushroom ritual. That's what the whole Dead Sea Scrolls are. It's a mushroom ritual told in a story of Jesus. And you find mushroom art all around Europe. And um, a lot of people think that's because Jesus is a mushroom. But the interesting thing is that you find mushroom art popping up specifically in Europe around 1500. And that's when Spain would have been colonizing like the Mazatecs and stuff like that. So I think there was some kind of spiritual um, collaboration or spiritual exchange where these Mazatecs, for example, were giving these Spanish missionaries mushrooms. They were having Mm. crazy experiences because how can you not? They were taking it back to priests and stuff like that, and it made its way into European art around cathedrals and stuff like that. It's interesting. I've, so, like, I've heard of that theory before, but I've also heard a podcast of someone basically debunking that whole thing as well. Like, not saying that yeah. mushrooms weren't used, but 
to say that mushroom Jesus was literally Jesus a mushroom. Was a mushroom. No, that was completely well, debunked. I have a book yeah. called the Psychedelic Gospels, and the thing it it points out a lot of these. I haven't actually read, I, I haven't read the whole book, so I I can't say what it says. But I saw the cover um, and pretend I read it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that these shamans were giving priest and missionaries mushrooms and that's why and they took it back to spain and they took it back oh, to europe for sure like i agree I think that's why I it's think the, I think the truth is like somewhere it, in and the, the middle time, the timeline the timeline matches up around 1500 is when they would have been there and that's when it's popping up right yeah that, that's, so why, maybe that's, he's just, isn't that's where mushroom. i agree he's uh, that's why i agree he's like, a i think i think there's like a the truth is somewhere in the middle there of like okay jesus was was not a mushroom but mushrooms was definitely used in Catholicism, right? There was definitely there has Absolutely. to be something there, for sure. And you know, you can, someone that's watching this can can uh, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the idea of consuming the flesh of the God was around 1500, 1600, also, which is an interesting idea because I think that idea comes from comes from the European uh, Church, comes from a European saint that that introduced this idea. Um, that's, just, that's why I, I would like to talk to. I would love to like have a three-way podcast with someone who like is completely I know against someone, the idea and someone who's with that fucking idea. That'd be great. I, I know like a guy a you should have on your podcast. His name is Reverend Danny Nemu, and he's all about specifically the Bible and psychedelics. Oh, wow. And he knows like he knows all of it. All right. He's re he's we he should reach out to that guy. That's shout out to Danny Nemu. Because funny how like in in life we go through like these full circle moments and like how I started off growing up in Catholicism and then Same I rejected it and now I'm like going back. I'm like, no, this is fucking profound shit. Same man. with me. Yeah. Same with me. It's f I mean, I went to the tomb of Jesus. I would have laughed at myself five <sighs> years ago, six years ago. I wanted, yeah, I wanted, I want to do that. That would be sick. It's okay. It's I mean, okay. it's nice because it's nice because it's nice. And like it's got some history there, but it's a, if too I felt a little disrespected. Do you reckon? But yeah, I felt a little disrespected by how they the people were treating it. Mm. Yeah, I feel like they even in Australia you have a lot of these, uh, even Machu Picchu and all these massive tourist sites. They just yeah, it gets to the point where it kind of gets ruined. Yeah, in a way, not to be the hipster guy of like, well, it used to be cool, now it's mainstream, man. But I don't know. I mean, I think everyone should go, but everyone going kind of ruins anything. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. What to do? So you gave LSD to a Hindu. What do you call him? <laughs> a Hindu monk? You call him a sadhu. A sadhu. sadhu. Or, that's right. That's or right. a Baba G. Or uh, some people may call him a guru or something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, how, I gave I gave him. Yeah. How did that um, go? Okay. So. Well, first of all, what what is the general consensus of LSD in that culture? Oh, it yeah. depends. Uh, well, for one, and in, well, in India itself, India has a pretty psychedelic culture. Like when the youth, the youth, they're all about it. Okay. But um, as far as I mean, a lot of these people, especially like people that worship Shiva, like maybe for example, like a Krishna devotee, you wouldn't spot, you wouldn't find. Right. And she smoked uh, weed all high. the time, right? Or, or she consumed Shiva. Yeah. Shiva. The, well, Shiva's the ma the masculine, and then there's Kali, or there's a bunch of different names that represent the feminine. But Shiva's the masculine energy of destruction. And he also is the lord of intoxicants. So people that like to get high will worship Shiva, which isn't all Hindus. Most Hindus, a lot of Hindus take take celibacy and sober really serious, complete like a monk, opposite, like a Buddhist right, monk. Right. Yeah, complete opposite. So you get both extremes in the religion. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so this guy, he is all about Shiva. If you watch the video of him taking it, he puts his hand up right away and says Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva. Before anything, like before we even had a chance to explain to him what it was going to do, he put it in his mouth. Holy shit! So, um, so yeah, yeah, these guys are okay. cool. I've, was that his first time tripping? Out. Sorry to cut you off, but yes. was that was, it, yes. that was his first time taking. Time <laughs> yeah, these guys live in the jungle. They don't have any idea what this stuff is. Whoa! So, um, how much did you give him? We were talking just one one tab. I, I'm not sure how, what the dose was. Okay, yeah, I yeah. didn't give it to him. So Boy, someone yeah. that was with us had it, and they it just I happened to be there with my camera, and I was like, I can't miss this. Cool. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, but we were talking it up to him, like, yeah, this is this helps us see God. Like, this is our med. This is like a tool we use for meditation in America, and like, this helps us connect to spirituality and stuff. So we really built it up. We okay. were calling it Samadhi medicine. Samadhi. Samadhi, Samadhi. is like a deep Samadhi, Samadhi is like a deep uh, merging into oneness in okay. a deep state of meditation. Right, right, right. So we were saying it puts you into that, and. Um, yeah, he then. Well, we were explaining this to our friend Sonu Baba, okay. and then the other guy is the guy who took it. 
we were calling him Tiger Baba because he has a turban that's got tiger stripes on it. So we were calling cool. him Tiger Baba. <laughs> and uh, Sonu Baba hands Tiger Baba one of the LSD tabs. We explained it to Sonu Baba. Tiger Baba walks up in the middle of the conversation. Sonu Baba hands him the LSD without explaining it anything to him. Tiger Baba just eats it right away. He doesn't even let boom. us. He doesn't even it, boom. And then he goes Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva, and walks away. So we're just like, what the fuck? Like, like, no, wait. And then we wait, never wait, saw him again. <laughs> I mean, we, we did it. We explained it to him. We were like, you're going to feel high, and it's going to help you with meditation. You might want to just go meditate and hang out. So he went and sat down for about 30 minutes, and then he was just too antsy, and then he wanted to go on his motorcycle. So we were like, uh, you probably shouldn't go on your motorcycle. It's going to be kicking in soon. And uh, my friend was like, he was really insistent about going on his motorcycle. So my friend was like, I'll drive. Okay. And my friend tried to drive, and then he just kept, I don't know, he couldn't start it. So the Tiger Baba was like, you can't drive. You're going to break my motorcycle. I'm driving. And he just hops out, and he pulls away. So there goes oh. Tiger Baba, my friend. My friend's holding on to him on oh, the back while he's God. on acid. In India. <laughs> and the, in India. Right. And I mean, you can't, you can't stop a man on a mission sometimes, you no, know? No, no, So, I mean, no, we no. tried to warn him. Can't get him, yeah. Can't. Either join him or just get, out, yep, get the gotta fuck join out him. of his way. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So my friend just hung on and we're, there he goes. We're like, okay, see you guys. Have a nice and trip. then um, we didn't hear nothing for about four hours. Wow. And uh, we just, another friend, another sadhu friend took us into the jungle about like an hour and a half into the jungle to this random spot. And we were just sitting there. It was real like there was nothing around. There was a there was like a dude meditating there. Just oh, one guy shit. meditating. Yeah, we we were doing some crazy weird st stuff. And uh oh, they're, they're the best all of a sudden yeah. all of a sudden after about an hour being there, we hear a motorcycle echoing in the distance. And these dudes just they pull up in the middle of in the middle of where we were. So we got to connect with them and he was still tripping a little bit. And uh the next day, uh we kind of inquired into it, into his experience, saying like, you know, trying just to get those spiritual nuggets out of him, whatever he, his experience oh, was. Oh, yeah. And uh, we said, so how was your experience? Was it good for meditation? And he just looked at us and laughed. And he was like, I don't need this to meditate. He was like, this is for people that don't experience God and everything. That's awesome. So it's good to, so we just it, like, it, it can be useful to open up the door, but then after a certain point, it becomes unnecessary. Like you can it really do it. blew our minds. That's he's so like, cool, he was like, it, he was like, it helps me understand where you guys are coming from. But he's like, I don't need this. This is for people that that don't see God uh, already. Uh, what a boss answer, huh? <laughs> I don't know. We were expecting like, yeah, like I don't know, like it was very deep. I got to whatever. I don't know. Yeah. And he just laughed. So, yeah, our for faces. you, Ameri yeah, for you Americans, maybe, but nah, man. yeah. After the show, I thought that was so cool. Him. Well, it, actually, it's a good segue to go into uh, Ram Das because he talks a lot about that. You know, he stopped. The psychedelic that's the part, one. and you've been on, that's... you've been, you've met Ram Das. Yeah, I've been, been to his to house, the... dude. That's. Can you explain that experience? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, fuck. How do I explain being around Ram Das? Um, <laughs> well, it's ineffable. The way I, the way I kind of explain it is like, when you make eye contact with someone, you kind of feel this naturally intimidated after like staring at someone's eyes for a minute, you know, like yeah, you just yeah. kind of break, you just naturally want to break. It's just uncomfortable to do that. Cool. Like, yeah, but with Ram, awkward, Das, yeah. Ram Das, it's just like, you get locked into it and it's just like, you don't want to look away. And it's just like, he's looking at you. Cause like when you look at someone, you can kind of see the gears in their head of judgment going on, you know, yeah. whatever it is, you know, but with Ram Das, it's just like, he's just, wow. you're just in this, space of just like i'm getting goosebumps right now you just i can't even explain it, it. it's just like it's crazy yeah it's like uh it's just like being sucked into a vacuum like is it like that sort and, of unconditional love presence sort of thing yeah, it's it's like being around it's like your grandma hugging you or something like your, your grandpa i guess in this case it's like yeah. your grandpa just hugging you and it's just like a nice loving just I don't know. Wow. It's like Mother Earth and Father Time just loving you. That's awesome, man. Because I, yeah, I always I appreciate know. his perspectives, and I think he hits the nail on he's the, the head. When he's the star, man. We're, the, we're we This podcast and me and you, we are all an echo of what he's done for culture. Yeah, exactly. Maybe not him specifically, but he's a big part of that. He's a big part of that for bridge. sure. You know? 100%. Yeah, he's been a massive influence. 
on like my perspective, yeah. especially about like approaching psychedelics. He kind of like grounded me a little bit because I was putting too much, uh, how do you say, value on the psychedelic itself where it's like, no, 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 these are portals that open up shit yeah. that's already within you. And it's fine. Like I don't, because there you can talk about, oh, once you get the message, hang up the phone. And I think that's, again, it's like a half truth. Like, yeah, it's true to a certain extent. I think that there's a point where psychedelics don't no longer become necessary, but it doesn't mean that you can't derive value from it. But yeah. I think that the, you know, it's usually like your first profound trip that's going to be the most, like that's going to produce the biggest changes. I don't think that you're yeah. never going to get, oh, I don't want to say never because I don't want to speak in absolutes, but you know what I'm saying? Like it gets to yeah. a point where even now, like I tripped for the first time in a couple of years and yeah, it was amazing. It was profound. I learned so much, but I didn't need it. It didn't, yeah. you know what I mean? Like my life would have been just as good without it. Um, but I think now I've, come, yeah, I agree with yeah, that. I've come with a different approach with psychedelics, whereas before it was purely for spiritual growth and like this kind of ego thing. Like I want to take this to like grow and better myself sort of thing. Whereas now it's like I had recreational. Yeah. I'd use it recreational and it was fucking amazing because it didn't have that, yeah. that, uh, that expectation. You know what I mean? Like this is going to give me this. Now it's like, yeah, well, whatever happens, happens. And, yeah, I'm trying to go spend some time with Ramdas and uh, before he dies or before, like I will I, see him again this December. I really want to meet if, him, so uh, you know if everything makes it, if he if everything works out. Maybe we so. Can I'm go going to the retreat in December. Hawaii, yeah, right? yeah that'd be cool. Because I'm yeah, Hawaii. Because yeah. I'm a lot more free, and I can yeah, I'm more like open to go on more travel adventures. And Hawaii isn't that expensive either, so I'd love to meet him. Yeah, um, I can. Uh, yeah, I'll put you in contact with the foundation. They can maybe hook you up with a discount or something. Yeah, that'll be awesome. In exchange man. for filming, or I'd appreciate that. Yeah, make a yeah. photo. Because yeah, man, it'll be cool yeah. to like put, like link up in person, you know, instead of just like, yeah, it's for cool. Sure. It's it's better than nothing, but I keep knocking this thing. Um, but I don't have any clue how I am able to hang out with Ramdas. I don't. I this is just like I'm blown away every time I think about it. Like I'm just like, how the fuck did I get into right? this little? Yeah. I have no idea. And you met like Duncan. Trussell. And I'm right now. I'm working yeah. on a documentary with. It. Yeah, I've met. It's like this, being in that little that little circle has given me so much opportunity and just been like uh, crazy. I guess I don't know any other way to explain it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm now I'm working on a documentary with the foundation about one of the uh, people in India named KK Saw. He's uh, he is actually uh, one of the reasons Ram Dass got to meet. Named Kurali Baba, and I don't know if you know who Krishna Das is, but he's I the do, reason yeah. Krishna Das. Got, he's oh. the reason Krishna Das got to meet Neem Kurali Baba. At the end of my acid trip, I, I listened to that song by Krishna Das, the Om Shiva, or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I was just going through like, I need to get my shit together, man. <laughs> it's like my revelation was like, I need to quit sugar. I eat too much sugar because we'll go through like this yeah. metaphor of like the sugar demon and like this addiction, and it's like you don't look at it as a big deal, but sugar addiction is like. Fuck, like, I've been addicted it's, to weed in my past, but sugar, that's, like, my number one addiction I feel of all it. time. For me, too. Yeah, me, I'm too. A, I'm a sugar junkie. Like, it's just... And cancer <laughs> thrives off that. Yeah, man, I know. And I was going cancer through this whole... Because, like, on the come down of acid, I feel, like, more aware of the uncomfortableness of being human. You know what I mean? Like, my teeth sort of start hurting. I feel... I'm more aware of the clamminess and the sweatiness and, like, the yeah. achiness. Which is weird, because with, with mushrooms, I feel the opposite. I feel, like, an afterglow effect. I feel better after it's over yeah it's fucking yeah it's that's a, so funny it's a different realm definitely acid and because i feel like a lot of these tools can put you in the same place but at the same time i don't 100 percent believe that either i think that every tool has like it's has its similarities but it also has like its distinct thing that it taps you into i feel like mushrooms is more like i don't know something else takes you along the ride whereas oh yeah L for sure lsd is more I'm still within my the confines of my mind, which is infinite anyway. It's fucking profound, but yeah. I'm still I'm way more in control. Like I would walk around. I had a city. crazy uh, I had a crazy realization watching that Paul Stamets Joe Rogan interview. Did you see that podcast? I did. Um, yeah. When he when he talks about uh, how we are fungal bodies, how humans essentially evolved from mushrooms. Mushrooms are some of the first land creatures, you know. Yeah, man. They yeah. coming out of coming out of water. Mushrooms were some of the first life that evolved into humans essentially into everything we see uh, to all the different uh, variety of life so i think it's interesting that when we eat mushrooms that we communicate with 
like an ancestor almost. Yeah, well, I feel you think, more in you think touch of the with, timeline. Yeah, I feel more in touch mushrooms. with nature. Like when I, oh, I was, yeah, absolutely. The, like my last mushroom trip, first time in eight, it was like just a tiny dose as well. And I had cubensis for the first time in my life, which is interesting. But anyways, uh-huh. I was like, we we're like exploring like the Australian bush, literally climbing trees and like ants everywhere. And I felt like it was like nature was pulling me in. It's like I wasn't climbing. It was like nature. Recently? Was, yeah, recently, like the other day. Oh, um, oh did, you, did, released, you, did Koi released, take mushrooms? No, not I wasn't with Koi that day. That was the day before. Oh, okay. So I took... Um, so I'm actually making... The, my next vlog is that. So nice. I don't explicitly say I ate mushrooms, but for these guys, for you guys who are listening to this podcast this far in, well, let's just say that... <laughs> There you go. Yeah. A little Easter egg for you. Yeah, a little Easter egg, yeah. Because, like, it kind of, like, it's sort of implied, but not really, because you have to be careful with YouTube these days. It was one of those things, like, I was record- I was interviewing my mate Jared, and this was one continuous long shot, like, before we got into the car, then in the car, and he stops the car, and he's like, "Hey, yeah, look, that's a mushroom. Get out of the car, jump the fence, found a mushroom. And then that fucking, oh, wow. and then that, ha- and then, yeah, we just went on our journey. But, no, it, it, I feel like there's a massive distinction between, like, the mushrooms and the LSD realm. I'm not saying that one's better or worse, or of course it depends on. Yeah. But I feel like mushrooms are a little bit less. I don't know because there's there's different species. This is what I'm I'm um, thinking about lately is that I don't think psilocybin well, is psilocybin. Like just because this mushroom has psilocybin, it's going to give you this exact effect. I don't believe that. Right. At all. I think that's bullshit. So you think it's kind of like THC, like yeah, both indica and indica and sativa yeah. are both THC, but. And it depends how it's different. grown, right? I think right. the environment. The Mazatex, for example, yeah. used mushroom, different mushrooms for different things. Yeah, and I, I, I and yeah. now I've had experience with two different species: one that grow here, specifically, um, well, mostly in Victoria, where they're called they're called the subarachnoses. They they grow in the wood ch- in like wood chips and creeks, and you got to go through like uh, under bushes and stuff like that. And they're much smaller, but they're more potent. Whereas the one that I had in Queensland, they were like cow paddocks. They're the classic cubensis that grow. Th- you know, yeah. from cow shit. And I believe that each species of mushrooms has its own thing. Even scientifically speaking, it's going to have different alkaloids. You know, it's not just psilocybin. You know, it's like saying peyote and San Pedro is the same just because the active ingredient right. is mescaline. It's just, it's pseudoscience, right, to say it's the same. And yeah, I, I believe that with mushrooms, there are different, I don't know, they have, they take you in different realms depending on which species you take this is what i believe in. Anyway. I, I would like to try that yeah i, I never messed around with that but that would right. be interesting well, interesting experiment and you look like you know at the start we talked a little bit about hermeticism and there's a law law of correspondence right the the mic the, the sorry the microcosm is a reflection of the macrocosm and there's for example there's benevolent and malevolent aspects of reality and and that manifests in all forms like human beings obviously there's plants some plants can heal you another plant could, for example, there's a plant called the Gimpy Gimpy plant, which was, which was, uh, and we found it, by the way, I was this Which close. is a questionable name already. I, I, don't, I would never trust a plant I was called this that. close of stepping on it, by the way, so I might not even be here. It's nicknamed the suicide plant because back in the Anzac day, a soldier went to take his shit and he took the Gimpy Gimpy plant, wiped his ass with it, and the pain was so unbearable ah. that he shot himself in the head. Like, this ah, is poor how- guy. Yeah. God bless is, his soul. Yeah, no shit. But this is what I'm saying, like, even in the plant world, there are- from our perspective, from a human language perspective, there are benevolent and malevolent plants. So it just it would make sense that this would apply to mushrooms, to environments, to everything. So I think there are more. Yeah, I agree. And I, f- yeah. So I can't prove this. This is just fucking mental masturbation. But I think I think I, there might be something to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. But again, it all comes back to just uh, our judgments. You know? Yes. Yes. It's all just judgments of the ego. Of There's a quote from The Adams Family, which is kind of a silly show, but it's a great quote. It's, uh, what's chaos to the fly is normal to the spider. Mm. Well, interesting you say that because even just us climbing trees, we're having the best time ever. But from the ant's perspective, which was on every branch, we were just this giant yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah. Barry, leave without me. I'm probably <laughs> fucking destroying fucking... Timothy! <laughs> No, <laughs> he's just like falling, and I'm just like, huh? <laughs> and then I find it, <laughs> and from their perspective, it's like this massive hurricane just fucking <laughs> blowing them so into funny. oblivion and shit. But it's true, that, that like could from be my happening pers- to us, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that could be what the universe is. Yeah, the universe is like that's what a tornado <laughs> is, and all these things. It's just like some giant thing we can't even comprehend. 
Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm just talking about belevolent and malevolent. That's a judgment, quite obviously. And it's just all relative to our experience. And, you know, sometimes we can have a very dark experience, but those have usually been the most beneficial. But I do want to say that's because I integrated it. It's not the same yeah. with everybody. Some people do have a fucking tragic ending with this kind of stuff. Um, oh, so, yeah. So that's I, true. And I've seen it. Yeah. So it's, yeah. It can be really fucking heartbreaking because not everyone integrates it. Not everyone has it in the right experience where everything was meant to be. It's like, yeah. So I, I do feel the need to let, at least to say that, say it out loud and acknowledge well, that. We're kind of lucky because yeah. we have, we kind of have like Ram Dass and these people to give us the language to integrate it. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise it's like, what the fuck do you even do with these experiences? Yeah. And I think it's really important to like have language to really understand what you're going through because. Uh, like when I first went through this trip, I didn't understand it. I just fell into this nihilistic hole and I feel like, and that's because I didn't have the comprehension of what was actually going on. I didn't have the bigger picture perspective because I believe that nihilism is just a, it's a very naive rationalist mind trick. <laughs> I yeah. do. I don't, yeah. It's just like, cause you're just yeah. looking at one aspect of reality and you got to look, you got to reconcile relative and the absolute and not just look at one aspect and be like, this is it. Nah, this is rubbish, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I am scared to die though, even though none of it's real. <laughs> See, I'm like, death itself, it's like, that's not the thing that scares me so much, it's the process of dying that scares Yeah, yeah, same, so, exactly. I'm not scared of what's going to come after. Yeah, it's just the next level, the next stage, or whatever the fuck What I'm means. scared of, I have this vision in my head and it terrifies me. It's like me in a hospital bed, I'm all hooked up, maybe I have those, one of those things shoved down my throat. Oh. My family's all coming to say goodbye, and I'm just I'm just waiting, and I know it's coming. That's what I'm scared of, is that moment mm. of just like, fuck, I know it's just one of the, any second now, I'm just going to be like... Sweet death. I don't know. Yes. Knocking on your door. And everyone's step. all depressing and stuff. Some random stranger sticking holes in me with fucking IVs yeah, and stuff. Man. That That's the thing that like, gets me the I'd most. rather get eaten by a crocodile. Yeah. Or well, come to Australia up your chances throw me in there yeah <laughs> but it's like that's the thing that also gets me is more the scene, the suffering of friends and family because i'm very like empathic in that way i just feel people's pain so when i don't know I, I would like to think that i can get to the stage where i am dying and people can be okay with it and then you can let go it's like duncan truss has talked about this before because if your family member is like fucking so destroyed that you're on your way out and she doesn't want you to go it makes it harder for yourself to let go Cause you're like, fuck, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to leave you here. You know what I mean? And that's like, <sighs> fucking life, man. Yeah, that's. And he just recently to... lost. He, Duncan's been through a lot. Duncan lost his mom, lost his testicle, and his dad, and then recently lost his dad. Yeah. And then just had a baby. So he's been, he's been really been, uh, fuck. confronted with truth. Not that, not that having <laughs> a baby a way, is yeah. like being confronted with <laughs> reality. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, that's the thing. That's why I really love traveling and, and even like going to South America because it's very sobering. You know, it shows you reality. And that's when I'm, to go back to the whole Australia living in the bubble thing, we don't deal with that shit. And when we do, everyone freaks out. Like if something bad happens, it's national news. Everyone's like, what the fuck? How can this happen? Whereas in other countries, it's like, that's a fucking reality on a daily basis. Yeah. Except that it's on the surface. That's what I like about South yeah. America. It's no bullshit. It's like everything, Same. everything is there. Reality is fucking right there in your fucking face. Whereas in Australia... The darkness is in the shadows. It's hidden. It's hidden. Yeah. Behind, and that's what makes it. And you kind of scary. feel it still. You feel it, man. You feel like, you know, there's like Crown Casino, which is like, the I like to call it Satan's When den. it's on the surface, you don't feel it as much. It's like, oh, okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I felt more comfortable tripping through a city in South America because everything was wow. there. It was beautiful. I didn't, it was, yeah. it was it's really beautiful, actually. Whereas in Melbourne, I feel that it's a dark presence because it's hidden. <laughs> And because I'm obviously I grew up here, so I know what goes on behind the scenes. I've been a part of that scene, and it's, it's not right. pretty. And like, for example, there's like Crown Casino, which is like the I like to call Satan's Den. It's like this. It's this place because I'm. I had a friend of mine who used to work security guard, and all the security guards are like ex fucking SAS hectic SWAT army dudes, you know, who used to be in war and shit. And nice. apparently they have like hidden tunnels and shit and people go there to commit suicide like every night oh, fuck. and they fucking like hide them in the fucking, in the tunnels and shit. And like, this is just one little tiny example of <laughs> Jesus like, Christ. Ah, yeah, dude, it's fucking, it's crazy. It's really fucking crazy. And the, 
even if you look, I think there was a st st statistic of the most Uber destination, the most Uber destination in all of Melbourne was this place called Revs, which is like this dirty nightclub, which is open like for 72 hours straight where people just get fucked up on drugs. It's so messed up that if you look somewhat nice, like I wasn't allowed in once because I didn't look dirty enough sort of thing. Not dirty as in like dirt, but like there's a specific style of clothing. You can't wear like a nice shirt or whatever. They won't let you. Oh, that sounds like my kind of place. But that was the most Ubered place in Melbourne for the whole year. More than the airport, more than fucking like main tourist destination. You know what I mean? Like it shows how like the the underground kind of drug scene. And right. Depression. And it's got the highest rates of homelessness in Australia. But it's... But wow. The polarity is that Melbourne is fucking... It's my favorite city uh, of all this yeah. like, that I'm telling you because I know that people are scaring off like, whoa, Melbourne sounds horrible. It's like, no, no, no. It's fucking incredible. It's amazing. Like the amount of art and culture and the, how the cities look and the people and the multiculturalism and the food and like... I can go on and on and on about how, how much I love Melbourne, but I also need to acknowledge the other side, right? And then people get upset when you acknowledge the other side, and that's the specific point I'm telling you when people live in the bubble. When you talk about the yeah. opposite side of polarity, they're like, hey, 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 man, don't talk shit about my country. I'm not talking shit. I'm literally just observing what I've experienced, you know? So, but you've got to take it all. Yeah, that's the same is. reason I love being in India. It's yeah. because it's the same thing. It's just you have... There's nothing, it's not hidden. And everyone is kind of a little bit more genuine because of it. Exactly. There's, yeah, there's, le there's less bullshit about it. And I hate, because my the thing that grinds my gears is people is when people are disingenuous and bullshit. Just tell yeah. me. I would rather you be a fucking cunt as long as you're being truthful Same. than to be nice. You know what I mean? Like, it makes, yeah. Uh, well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Depends, yeah. <It's, laughs> I'm this. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm used to it. Cause, like, Australian culture is always like giving shit to your mates, and it's fucking. It was yeah. It was brutal fucking growing up, bro. Oh. Yeah, I think that's just males. Yeah. I think we're just. I think we're just ridiculous. Yeah, man. I, I got to the point where I was ashamed to be Chilean. I was like embarrassed of my culture. Damn. Yeah. Full on. Yeah, like I was embarrassed of my parents and my fan and like full on because I got it was fucking savage, man. You do like, look a little. You look a little Chilean now that you say that. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. I'm half Chilean. My dad's Polish. So that's a fucking weird mix. Born in Australia. Yeah. Oh, you know, do you know Theo, you know who Theo Vaughn is? Yeah, of course. Yeah. He's half Polish, half Nicaraguan. Oh, you really? guys are basically. I have no idea go. what the hell a Nicaraguan is. No offense <laughs> to the Nicaraguan people. <laughs> I think it's basically the same as a Chilean, except they were colonized. Ah. That would be cool. But um, I think it's a good note kind of end on man i think we should sort of <laughs> that's a good note to end on the nicaraguan people um nah but i want to, just before we end off do you want to tell people at home uh like the documentary series that you're making oh yeah yeah sure um so, so i've been working on a documentary series coming out well it's like a travel series called of earth I don't have a release date yet. I wish I had a release date. Um, unfortunately, my friend that is editing for me is like a busy dude that's like working with Jimmy Kimmel and working with all these crazy bands and stuff like that. Shit. So slowly, slowly, it's gonna get, it's gonna be up eventually. And uh, but yeah, we did some crazy stuff. We hung out with. Uh, do you know what the Agori are? We might, we may have talked about them in your last podcast. I talk about it all the time. But uh, the Agori is okay. like a, it's like a sect of Hindus that. Uh, are really taboo like they eat dead bodies they do like really dark magic kind of stuff like meditate on top of dead bodies put a candle in a dead person's mouth and Whoa. sit on it and do mantra so i got to hang out with these guys um did a bunch of wild stuff they covered me in human ash and Holy it's uh yeah we got some we got wild stuff on that so i don't know when it's gonna come out but it's definitely coming out 2019 hopefully before summer is what i'm hoping for fingers nice. crossed but and who's working on um, it? Are you editing it all yourself or like? No, I hired a guy. His name is Jar. The work of Jar is his Instagram. He's like one of my favorite photographers. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, he's great. I'm going to check him out. He's, yeah. yeah, he's cool. He's really good. So that's what, that's um, like sort of like the um, transitioning that I'm going through. He's like um, getting a team. Dude, you know what I mean? Yeah, we. I think I think that's the next level. I'm sick of, I'm sick of uh, just not taking it to the level i want it to be at you know i know i'm capable of it so oh, i for just sure man just go well, let's it. Yeah. we should link up together because like we'll talk oh about, absolutely we should we'll talk we're about doing, we're in the same we're into the same stuff so yeah, we man. might as well do do it you Fuck know yeah we've got some exactly we just traveled like different parts of the world but still fucking insane stories you know 
Um, but because we're, we're talking about you're going to India in September, if I remember. I'm going to go. I'm going to be there. Yeah. So the way this is going to work out. I'll... Let Let's plan this out because I'm 100% down to go to India. I think okay. we should do some filming together and we'll. Yeah, absolutely. Out, so what know? I'm going to yeah. my India my India plan is I'll be there September, early September, and then I'm actually going to be working with the Ramdas people. They're doing a uh, following the footsteps of Ramdas, a oh, little wow. retreat in the mountains, okay. and they want me to film that for them. So for like ten days or something, I'll be filming that in September, and then I'll be there all through October. Okay, so, uh, so I'll, I can go there um, like same time, early September. Maybe meet you there, and then yeah. if you wanted, if you needed like. Do your own thing. I can yeah, do my own I'll thing. probably have to branch off for a little bit, but yeah. um, we could go meet Sham Sundar Das Baba. Yeah, and then yeah. like after the re- after the retreat, we'll go Done. just get wild. I'm excited. Yeah, uh, yeah, me always, too. It's it's, uh, it's been a long time coming, uh, India for me, and it's real cheap because pretty close to Australia as well. So yeah, flights, are, flights are very yeah. very affordable. I'm thinking the south. I have a whole I have a whole plan. I'll send you some plans, and you yeah. can kind of. Look cool. at, look around the area. I think we and both see. have uh, quite a few like mutual Indian fans as well. So, oh yeah, yeah. dude, the Indians. My I uh, like thirty uh, percent of my views from like last month came from India. Something oh, wild really? like that. That's, that's awesome. Maybe not that high. That's that's pretty high. But it was a it was a shockingly high number. I was like, geez, no, all it's, these people it's are watching. Good, it's good to branch out because like I'm learning that because people are slowly learning that I'm Chilean, so I'm getting like more Chilean fans and like breaking oh, into cool. the you south. You should start making videos in Spanish. I'm actually literally going to do that, but with a different team. Like I'll get someone else to just take care of the whole YouTube shit because I can't put another thing on my plate right now. I can record the yeah. video. That's cool. But like the amount of footage that I have just from this year, and it's only February, I could not film anything for the rest of the year and still have yes. enough content. It's fucking crazy. That's good. Yeah, it is good. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. But now it's getting to the point where you need to like, I'm going to need some help. We're going to need a group effort because I love filmmaking and like really going deep into different cultures. And Same. Just whatever. Yeah. It's fucking awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on oh, again. Yeah. Uh, of course, we could we could do this whenever. Also, I got I have just started my own podcast. I yes. can give that a little shout. A place for humans is what it's called, and it's actually on the comedy, under comedy on iTunes or it's on Spotify and whatever. And it actually every episode so far, besides the last one, has made me chart top 150 on iTunes for the podcast. And I've been really stoked about bragging about that one. So that's sick, you guys man. might like it. Congratulations! Um, it's actually Thanks, really, yeah, I've, actually, have, I've actually listened to, to every podcast so far. It's really cool. I like the style. Thanks, it's like you'll very, have to come um, on there. Yeah. Well, invite me on and I'll Whenever. I'll come over. And I think okay, when good. we go to India, we can actually finally do a podcast in person or even something. Oh, dude, we'll do a million more potent than a podcast we'll, as well. Of course, we'll do a million videos. I'm gonna I'm gonna try. While I'm in India, I'm gonna try to do one video a day. So do nice. a month of videos. Yeah, and yeah, India is like that's the place. That's like a good representation oh, yeah. of reality. I think in many ways. Oh yeah, you've got the there's unlimited of, content. You've got the polarity of like fucking amazing mystical temples and fucking monks, and then you've got like dead bodies on the street like i haven't even been there in person but just from what i could I can understand like I, I would imagine it's like south america but even just fucking more intense because south america yeah there's de- i mean there's well. definitely areas that are really intense that you'll see like dead bodies and stuff but that's not all over but um mumbai for example uh you'll find one of the most i think it's like the third biggest slum in, in the world it's called Daravi, i believe wow. and across the street is the most expensive house in the world so you have this the, a real a real polarity there fuck that's crazy the most expensive house in the entire world and how's is like, like down the street how's like safety because i know that like poverty is like really i've, I've never intense. felt unsafe okay. no, never because in south america you, i feel safe because i know the culture and i speak the language but there's still it's South America, dude. <laughs> I'm more scared of yeah. South America than I would be of Indians. Yeah, Indians well, are very passive people. I mean, you think of their their history. Well, next time you no come, wars. Next time you come to South America, um, come. I'll be a t- I'll be a tool tool guide. It's all good. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. We'll plan that. Yeah, that's my that's my shit. I'm actually going to get my uh, citizenship, my dual citizenship. For, so I'm going to be nice. officially a Chilean because they keep that's charging cool. Australians fucking like 120 bucks. It's like, I've been here like 10 times in my life, man. My mom's Chilean. Sorry, mate. 120 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and Uruguay was crikey. completely free. Fucking crikey. Yeah, exactly. But sweet, man. Um, we'll leave it at that. Because I'm sure we can talk about it R.I.P. Steve Irwin. Uh, St- I forgot what Steve Irwin's daughter's name is. But if in- you're watching this by some reason, uh, hit me up. <laughs> at Dakota Wint is my Twitter. <laughs> All right. Hopefully you can get that uh, citizenship. And then uh, we can hang out here. Yeah, we'll be neighbors. (laughs) 
Well, I'll see you, man. I'll keep in touch. We'll plan this India trip and who knows whether we do another podcast in between then as well as over there. Whatever cool. happens, happens, man. Sweet. Cool. See you guys. See ya. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of the All Mate Tom podcast. Love to give another shout out to Entheazen for sponsoring this podcast. I uh, really appreciate it. And for the Your Mate Tom podcast listeners, you guys get a 15% discount. Just go to entheazen.com slash Tom. That's entheazen.com slash Tom. Or just check the link in the description box. Anyways, thanks again for watching. I appreciate you guys. Have an awesome day and catch you on the next episode. Peace.